Hi, it's Sandra from Sandra D Imagery. And in this video, I'm going to show you one of the many ways you can add, or as I like to say, sculpt light using Photoshop. We'll be using selections and adjustment layers like levels or curves to create some lighting effects. So grab your mouse, let's dive in and have some fun sculpting light together. With this image, I'm going to sculpt the light Put light and shade into these mountains using adjustment layers. So for example, I may want to darken that area there or I may want to lighten that area there, but I don't want to use the dodge and burn tools. So what I'm going to do is use levels and curves. So what I'm going to do is come up here and get my selection tool and you can either use a quick selection or you can use your lasso but I'm going to use quick selection tool and I'm just going to come up here and select this area. I'm not going to be too fussy with it it's just the concepts that I want to work on. Now what I want to use is the levels so I'll come up to my adjustments here and click on the levels adjustment layer that will put that selection into a mask and you can see that there. Now what I'll do is I will just work with my mid-tones and I'll just darken it a little bit. Now if I darken it too much you can see this hard edge that's just here and I don't want that. So I'll just darken it down a little bit there and I could add some bit more light into it but I don't. If I move my dark you can see that there's a real hard edge on there. So I'm just going to just darken it a little bit. Let's turn that layer off. Have a look. I'm only darkening a little bit. I don't want it too dark. So that's one way to use an adjustment layer to control your light in an area. Let's say, for example, that I want to lighten this area. So what I'm going to do is get my quick selection tool again, and I'll select this area here and again I'm not going to be too fussy on the selection. So this time what I'm going to do is use a curves. So I'll come up to my adjustments, I'll click on the curves, that's put that selection there into a mask. Now what I can do is, because I want to lighten it up, I might just come down into this area here, and just bring it up a little bit. Now you can see if I go to the wrong area and I push it up you can see this hard edging because all I want to do is lighten it a little bit if I go too far have a look of course that selection is not a good selection it really shows those sharp edges so what I'll do is just bring it down a little bit and just play with that now another way you can do it is if I come down and reset if I hold down my alt or option key and click on auto I get this dialog so I could say enhance brightness and contrast find dark now I definitely don't want that and I'll click up there and I definitely don't want that but I might like the enhance the brightness and contrast for example but again I look at that edging and I go no that's not going to work so I'll cancel that out so I usually start off just with the in the midpoint there and just lift it up a little bit I'll turn that layer off and you can see the increment is just slight. Now I know that it's a little bit hard on the edge there so let's turn that layer off. Definitely don't like that so what I'm going to do is delete that layer. Now what I've just done is non-destructive playing with the light and shade using adjustment layers which are non-destructive to this image. So let's start again. What I'm going to do, let's try the lasso tool. And why I'm doing it in different methods is that it's knowing your tools to use for different things. So let's say I'll just come along here and I'll just select that area there and I'll just join it in there. Now my feathering is 100% and that gives it a, a softer edge. So I'm going to use levels 
and I'll come in with my mid-tones, just lighten it up a little bit there. And that's working a lot better for me. Now I want to darken this area. So what I'm going to do is get my lasso tool. And the thing with the lasso tool is even though you draw around it, you may not get the selection you want. And that's why you use a quick selection. So you can see that it's missed a bit there. So I'm going to do Control or Command D to deselect, come back up, choose my quick selection tool, and I'm going to select that area again. It's about knowing your tools for the job that you need to do, both in selections, adding light, adding shade, whatever. So there's my selection. I could go out there a little bit further, but I'm not going to. I'll come in, click on Levels, and then I'll just play with my mid-tone slider, or I could use these sliders underneath here. Now, if I use that, that's too bright. So maybe I just want to see if I can darken that a little bit. So I usually start with the mid-tones. If I don't get it right, particularly in a scene like this that's got some strong light, I will then come down to these pointers down here. Now with this image, I photographed it purely as a background. If I look at this image, it's average, but it's a very good background to use for a composite. For example, I could add a house or a tree. Once I add the elements and I've got it where I want it to be as a composite, it's about sculpting the light into the composition to bring it to life. Thanks for watching this quick tip video. And if you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss my weekly content. Have fun being creative.